like having the most difficult time um, scripting a video for this specific topic, talking about biblical parenting. Spare the rod, spoil the child, those types of things. You know, I'm wrestling with the concept that, oh no, you know, it's not that type of rod, it's a different type of rod. I need grace, love, patience, and, 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 and all those things to even be a parent. I thought, spare the rod, spoil the child. I thought that was one verse in the Bible that everybody was just blowing out of proportion, you know? Um, come to find out, it's just, it's all over. It's, <laughs> fail at it every single day like sometimes it's too much obedience and not enough um patience and sometimes it's too too much patience and not enough obedience and, and just and so i'm struggling with that i'm struggling with that because did we just mess these kids up like did we just did i did i cause us to do it all wrong all right so I have been like having the most difficult time um, scripting a video for this specific topic, talking about biblical parenting. Unlike all the other biblical concepts that I've been like dissecting and going through, this one is the one that I don't have like a clear step-by-step -step, like plan or like, revelation or like do this then do that then do this then do that and so um, my friend encouraged me to just she said you know what just share where god has been growing you different convictions that you've been having and what has been re revealed to you through the holy spirit and so that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> just real raw unscripted <laughs> biblical parenting video hey girly my name is wendy and i am a homeschooling stay-at-home mom of four little ones and i am on a biblical journey on a journey of discovery on a journey of just really seeing what god biblically has to say about my marriage my parenting, my womanhood, and my homemaking. And I decided to share this journey with you guys. Now, parenting is a hard one for me. I was on the positive parenting, uh, gentle parenting kick for the longest, like for the longest time. And I truly believed that positive parenting and gentle parenting were biblical parenting but they go hand in hand because they talk about the concept of grace and they talk about the concept of being gentle and hearing your kids out and doing all these things. And so I thought to myself that this must be God, like, like how could God be against something so good, you know? All good things come from him and all that stuff, right? So gentle and positive and biblical parenting, um, they've got to be unanimous, you know? Like all religions lead to the same place. Um, and to, to discover that that is not true, to discover w that there are so many places that positive parenting lacks and there's so many places that gentle parenting lacks and so much things that are are needed that make it so not biblical number one i feel very bad much as if i did my kids a disservice i mean i've got a 10 year old and so um it's 10 years i've been doing it wrong so that kind of that kind of um really it, it convicts me it hits home um and i'm sorry guys i've got like real kids here so i hope you can hear me i hope they're not too loud in the background the other thing that i'm really convicted about which is not necessarily biblical um parenting but within my marriage my husband has wanted to take a more biblical parenting route and i was like no and this is more so in regards to like um spanking and you know saying things once and making sure that children follow through with certain things and stuff like that um he wanted to take more of that route and i was like no 
that's no. <laughs> like we're it's not this like we're not doing that. I'm seeing the fruits of gentle parenting and I'm seeing the fruits of of positive parenting and it's um not that I have bad kids. I don't. I really don't. But um there's something to be said about doing things the way that God tells you to do them in the Bible. I'm wrestling with a lot of things. I'm wrestling with number one, the whole the whole spanking thing. Spare the rod, spoil the child, those types of things. You know, I'm wrestling with the concept that, oh no, you know, it's not that type of rod, it's a different type of rod. That the rod um is just equivalent to discipline and not necessarily to something that you take and um and you know hit somebody with or like you know a shepherd's rod or whatever and i'm like yeah i see what you're saying but like when i read proverbs 23 13 through 14 or proverbs 22 15 or proverbs 22 6 or proverbs 13 24 or proverbs 29 15 maybe it's just a proverbs things but then you roll over to deuteronomy 8 5 and you go to hebrews 12 11 and you're just like okay <laughs> um it's just verse after verse after verse after verse after verse after verse after verse that talks about this i thought i thought spare the rod spoil the child i thought that was one verse in the bible that everybody was just blowing out of proportion you know um come to find out it's just it's all over it's it's all over and um and so i'm struggling with that i'm struggling with that because I'm, I'm looking at my Bible. That's that's what I'm pointing to. I'm struggling with that because I believe the Bible to be true. And I believe um, that, that what it says is true. And I don't believe in taking anything away from the Bible. And I don't believe in adding anything to the Bible. I believe um, in the Holy Spirit convicting us um in our like speaking things to us and showing us things and revealing things to us this says that spanking is god ordained um but then at the same time i do know that you shouldn't strike your children out of anger and so that is just something that i i'm wrestling with i'm wrestling with the concept of spanking and i'm wrestling with Number one, would that be something that I would even be interested in doing? Um, I, I, I'm not even interested in doing, but how would that look in my home? The other thing that um, is revealing is God. God is revealing to me is that our kids need God's law. Like, like they need God's law. Like they need rules. Regular. Like they need not rules. Not any rules. They need God's rules and God's laws. Like they need God's laws. They need to know God's laws. Understanding that a lot of times our kids are not for to make us feel better, to um, to accomplish things that we wish we could have accomplished, to be they're they're not our they're not ours. You know, our kids are God's, and so. They need to follow God's rules. They need to follow God's laws, not necessarily. And so then I'm convicted of like things that I require of my children that do not disobey God, like, or that, that have nothing to do with God's laws, you know? And so because of that, then is it really, should it be really a requirement for them? You know, things like that. I think that it is important for that our children need God's law because it exposes sin. Because it exposes sin. Because it shows them that we are all sinners that have fallen short of the glory of God. And with knowing God's laws, I think that it's important that our children understand the law's weakness. You know, and I've spent so much time listening to my children's hearts, you know, and which is a good thing, you know, but um, listening to their hearts and listening to every plea and doing all the things without requiring like immediate obedience. Like, that's important, y'all. Like, and I am like, really convicted about that like 
I, I didn't require immediate obedience. Like we could we could talk about it. Like let's negotiate. Like let's figure like because I want to listen to that. Because that's the thing with gentle and positive parenting is that you give your children a room to speak. And there's and don't get me wrong, I still don't think that there's because I think our God is a God of relationship. He wants to listen, he wants to hear our hearts, like he wants to to us he wants us to feel comfortable talking to him and coming to him and this and that and the other like that is god and that's those are the good things that you know that gentle parenting and positive parenting take um but to then but god requires obedience he does he re he requires respect for authority like i know like when i talk about this like a lot of people are like oh christian parenting use this christians use this concept of biblical parenting to take this authoritative um stance against their their children and create this like authoritarian like da -da -da, this that and the other and that's not true like that's not true our god is a god of love our God is a God of grace. Our God is a God of mercy. Our God is a God of gentleness. Our God is a God of patience. So that is not true. If your parenting does not have all those things in it, then it is not biblical. But our God is a God of obedience as well. Our God is a God of authority as well. He is our heavenly father. We must listen and submit to what he says. And so if we don't require our children to listen to what we say when we say to do it then at how is that biblical parenting um if we do not acknowledge that sin lives in our children that we are all born with a sinful nature a sinful disobedient selfish nature if we do not all acknowledge if we don't acknowledge that and we think that everything that is within us is good and that you know that we like what we have to say is so important so much more important than what god has to say that we just need to express ourselves and it's all about us and me 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 we get this like entitlement we get this like selfishness we get this we allow sin to fester and to grow and I hope I'm making sense, but that is, those are the things that like I'm really wrestling with. I'm really like, what is the balance? What is the balance between obedience and grace and love and patience? And like, that's a lot because I need that, you know, like, like I need grace, love, patience and 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 all those things to even be a parent you know um i fail at it every single day like it, sometimes it's too much obedience and not enough um patience and sometimes it's too too much patience and not enough obedience and, and just finding that balance and just constantly being in god's word and allowing him to speak to me and allowing the holy spirit to really um show me what I need to to know in order to be able to do this parenting thing for, in order for me and my husband to be able to do this parenting thing. coming together with my husband to just be like look babe like did we just mess these kids up like did we just did I did I cause us to do it all wrong because it wasn't like a like a Oh, um, babe, I think that we should do positive parenting. And my husband was like, okay, if you say so, let's do it. Like, no, he was like, uh, okay, like, what do you see this? And here I am bringing him facts and bringing him this and bringing him that and showing him all these things. And I'm like, look at this, look at this, look at this research, look at that research, look at this. Not once did I open up the Bible, not once. And that should have been what I did first, but because selfish sinful nature and the enemy but all that to say that um god's grace is essential i'm reading or rereading parenting by I, honestly i get them confused all the time i can't remember if it's paul or it's ted they both write books okay by paul trip and um 
I wanted to read you guys what it says on page 52 because this is the stuff that I'm wrestling with, you know? Well, first of all, on page 49, it says, if rules and regulations had the power to change the heart and life of your, of your child, rescuing your child from himself and giving him a heart of submission and faith, Jesus would have never needed to come. So that's the other thing that, you know, where it comes, like there needs to be a balance between law and grace. Like there needs to be a balance between teaching your children about God's law, but then recognizing that God's law has a weakness and that weakness is that it cannot save you and that the only thing that can save you is Jesus. So constantly turning kids back to Christ. This is why I have the child training Bible and those different types of things so that, because I don't, I don't know it, you know, like I don't, know it all and so that helps me bring it back to Jesus and bring it back to the gospel and um constantly preaching the gospel to my children so also it says here yes your children need the law of God in their lives but it is very dangerous as parents to daily ask the law to do what only grace can accomplish so it's definitely a balance um page 52 as a parent, you are not called to just enforce God's law in the lives of your children, but also to constantly exhibit and teach God's grace to them as well. So this is the one that like really hit home. This is the one that like when I read this, I was like, wow. Um, if God's plan really is to make his invisible grace visible by sending parents of grace to give grace to children who desperately need grace, then I am called not just to preach that grace, but to live and model it for my children every day. I think that that's huge. That's major. And it just helps you, I guess, to see or helps me to see that, you know what? God doesn't call perfect people to do anything. He calls people that need him. And so in order to live that grace-filled life, that grace-filled representation to my children, I need Jesus. I need God. I need to open up my word. I need to be in prayer. I need to um, um, listen to the Holy Spirit. I need to saturate myself with God more so than social media, more so than um, the TV more so than anything else. Like the greatest thing that I can do as a parent for my children is to constantly be meditating and to be um, in constant communion with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord Almighty and reading his word. Um, so I guess I'll wrap it up here um, by saying that like the most important thing that I think that we can do as Christian parents, as biblical parents, is read God's word and wrestle with these things and allow God to grow you and allow him to convict you and allow him to teach you whatever you need to learn and to heart change in, in whichever way that you need your heart changed. We always say there's no rule book to this parenting thing, but there is, it's this one. So read it, understand that it is never all or nothing. It is never rod or grace. It is never um, obedience or gentle. Um, it's, it's a combination, you know, it's a combination. And um, if you have like if you need some guidance when you read God's word and just to really know what questions to ask yourself while you read God's word, um, in the description, I have a Bible study guide and it's just a list of questions that you can use to ask yourself when reading God's word that can help to um, direct or dissect what you read. Like I said, this video, <laughs> Uh, didn't really have an outline like I like to have, but it was just a heart to heart, just a chit chat, just a real raw, vulnerable wrestle with what I'm going through 
and how I'm navigating it and um, turning you guys back to the word, go back to God and um, read his word and wrestle with these things yourself and um, trust that he'll meet you there. Talk to you in the comments and until next time. Bye.